First, I want to thank Jonas for having us here. And the one of the reason we are here is because they are very interesting catalogs that they have even been uh, sponsoring the project. So let's leave the background. So, so catalog is to help especially SaaS providers to be able to have much more tenants, in other words, customers running on the same hardware. So basically there are a few ways that SaaS providers provide database, databases for customers. They have the, the second common, most common one, you have one VM per customer, and that's usually for bigger customers, it's quite costly. And, um, and usually you want to have some, something like 10 gigs per VM to get some reasonable um, performance. So you can't have that many catalogs on one server. Usually you are maxed with about 100 or, or something in the tens. Because with 100, 100, you actually want to have one terabyte of memory. So server. A server. So, no, no, okay, not, yeah, servers. Yeah. So, basically, 100, 100 server tenants. So, to, to keep prices low, the much more common one is that uh, you have one, one, let's assume, MariaDB server, and you have one user and one database that you or schema that you provide to the customer. And they can only log in with that, that one, and they can only use that database, which is very useful for testing. And that also allows you to have prices like a couple hundred dollars a, a year for a database, or even less, because uh, having just uh, uh, being able to share one server with many users is, is quite good. But you have, a, but there is uh, some issues with that. First, you have very little statistics that is available with MariaDB per database user. So you can't really see what users are doing. And uh, there are also limitations that if you, uh, one user has, has for the tenants, if you have, want to use both Amazon Cloud and Google Cloud and have a, as a backup, you will not have the same database and username on both of those. So you have to do some things in your applications to get things to work. And the, the hard part is the noisy neighbor, neighbor, is that if you have one tenant who started using lots of disks and uh, doing queries that uh, affects everybody else, it's very, very hard to find him. But that's why uh, typically SaaS providers doesn't have that many user, users on one server. You usually there are some some ten or twenty or fifty, but they don't have hundreds or thousands, because they 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 really hard to manage. So and this kind of this describes this. So this is a virtual machine um, per use per tenant, and then you have one schema per per tenant. So with catalogs, uh, we are trying to do making things easier. So. It's the same server, the MariaDB server. You can run it in catalog mode or in normal mode. And if you run in catalog mode, you have one catalog per customer. And inside one catalog, you will have the same database that you, uh, and schemas that you would have in a standalone MariaDB. So every catalog has their own MySQL table or the user table, any amount of databases. So it looks like something that you would be alone. And uh, compared to one schema per user or tenant, uh, catalog is much better uh, both for the host provider and for the end, end uh, customer, because uh, we were able to have, thanks for better tracking and control, you can have much more tenants by database, which is good for a, a um, SaaS provider, but for the tenant, you don't have any limitations. It looks like you have something that you have full control of. So you can take your on-premise database and put it identically with all the, the users, permissions, everything um, in the cloud and use it. And you can then also copy to the cloud side. You can even, you will even be able to do replication from your on-premise to the cloud, which makes you very efficient and very low cost backup because uh, you only take up 
um, one shared instance instead instead of have, having to have like you have now uh, a full machine where you have full control of. So catalog still had a problem with the no noisy neighbor, but we have no in catalogs. We will have a, you have user statistics, you have catalog statistics and server statistics. So you can see what every tenant is, is doing in detail that you couldn't do before. So, that, so it's trivial to detect the problem, prob, uh, problematic catalog user, and um, we will provide tools to make it easy to, to move that out from uh, one catalog server to one probably bigger machine and then allow the SaaS provider to charge them more because they are, are using more things that they have paid for. We will also allow catalogs to have quotas, especially for SaaS providers. So each catalog will have their own configuration file with their own limits. And uh, that they, uh, each catalog can also have um, their own log file and their own, both the general log and the slow query log, which makes it much better for the tenant because they can actually look at uh, what are my queries, what are my slow queries, that you can do in a shared instance normally. And then you have a sysadmin uh, who has control of all catalogs, but uh, nobody can do cross joins between catalogs. The only thing that's special with the sysadmin is that he can move from catalog to catalog and he can do a, a show status over all catalogs to be able to see what's the the status that is already considered um, when you do a show ser server status, but um, you can go into detail and find a noisy neighbor and actually find out what's the problem in different things. So, uh, yeah, in the most optimistic cases, you can probably put put hundred times more users on the same machines. I mean, this is not for high. Uh, users who do a lot of things, but the SaaS providers you have a lot of users who barely connect and uh, when they do that, they do things for limited time and then disconnect, so that the server is not doing so much. But having a big, big buffer pool and uh, able to have lots of connections, the catalog will be still be much faster than using uh, uh, any of the other, other systems. So it's still in the developing. Uh, we, we, are, we, we, we are still planning for see which tools we should have, and we need to do some performance optimizations, specific functionality. And, um, and we will, for sponsors, we will we plan to backport uh, catalogs uh, um, to either 10.11 or 11.4, because we want the sponsors to get uh, um, the feature and be able to use it for the tenants and customers uh, basically one more than one year before anybody else gets it. Because this, when this goes into the community, it will go into development branch and then it will eventually be, become stable and, uh, and long-term supported. And then it needs to go to distrib distribution so people start to use it. So they will get some benefit from between at least one year, maybe up to two, depending on when we push it. So uh, we will have an excellent demo coming up, but a little bit about uh, things. Um, with catalogs, one of the issues is that all clients didn't have catalogs. So we want to provide an easy way to connect to a catalog. So that will work with both new um, client libraries like the C connector or with Perl and PHP that is still not updated. So if you have a new connector, you'll be able to say MariaDB minus minus catalog, and that will um, use an API to, to design, I mean, knowing this catalog, and then it will connect, connect to that one. But uh, if you don't, if you use an old uh, connector, then you need to um, basically, you can say that here's the catalog name and then the database name. So you do just put a dot in between. To, to tell that which catalog you're accessing to. And we will also allow to, that you can either connect to a specific port, then it goes directly to the catalog, then you don't need to name the catalog. And we have 
also way that we can use a unique IP for each catalog. And that this was something that uh, Jonas really wanted to have, so we will add those. And of course, because the user will just, co can just connect to a catalog, you can do a dump of, of a catalog, you can restore the uh, import it to a catalog. And uh, then I'll be able to do replication uh, from a Maria server to, to a catalog instance, between two catalog instances, and from, of course, from a catalog back to the premise. And, uh, and the SaaS provider can have one server and, of course, replicate everything to another server so they have a backup of everything. So we have a special super root user and um, so not everybody maybe is aware of the fact that we do have a catalogs already in all MariaDB in MySQL and if uh, it's called a dev catalog I and mean, this is all part of the protocol and everything else and um, to make things easy I made a super user of the dev catalog he can have special privilege that makes him a catalog super user and he can do commands that nobody else can do and only that user who with that privilege can do that and you can only have that privilege in the uh, dev catalog so he can do shutdown he can do master and slave he can do use catalog you can create and drop catalogs you can load plugins and use the different functions these are the things that normal user can do because we can't have user adding uh, uh, plugins that can crash things for the users. But they can always ask uh, the service provider, can you use this plugin? And if they add it, everybody gets access to it. So there are some limitations uh, because of the inner DB uh, um, uh, cat not catalog, but uh, um, system directory. There's some limitations of how long uh, um, table a database name can do. There were some characters left there, so we can have a character up to um, a name of up to 65 character for a catalog. But because this for SaaS providers, that should be a problem. They will define the catalog that that user will use. And uh, some errors that will be, for example, if InnoDB internally does a write error, we can't write that to them user um, error file because we don't necessarily know who is causing this error. So that will go to the a global one. And then there's uh, some tables that are um, global, like help tables. Not every user needs the help table. They will uh, install globally and everybody can use those. And ser servers and transaction history and UDFs. But otherwise, you shouldn't see a big difference with the catalog or not. So where we are, where we are. so we have it in the MDEV listed here. We have all tasks that, is, that are assigned for catalogs. There are about 20 open tasks. And where we are is that the, the MySQL test run, uh, shortened for MTR, we will run all tests in the server. We can run empty the normal test suite without catalogs just to verify that everything's working as before that works you can run with catalogs which means that uh, we we run everything within the dev catalog but that that has the whole new structure of where everything are that will work for everything and then we can also the, what i'm working on now is that we are running with catalogs but we run the test in a total different catalogs and there we have some issues with replication. Not the replicate itself, but some of the tests are not taken into account that you can't do stop slave or start slave in another catalog in the dev catalog. Only the system user can do that. So there is uh, some, uh, some things that needs to be fixed. I'm not working on that just now. So how to start with catalogs? So, Normally, you run MariaDB install DB to set up MariaDB. Now you have a new option that you can say catalogs, and then you list all the catalogs that you want to have. And everything is created as startup. And then the server will notice that. And when it starts, it will run in catalog mode. 
and you can add new catalogs later by just running MariaDB install again and just list the new catalogs, it will be added. Or you can do also use create command within the server and you'll basically run the same things. And, uh, and all the commands are inside the server, so there's no call outside. So the catalog, uh, specific catalogs are using catalogs. Uh, basically, this is only for the uh, system user. So you can create show, show create catalog. Of course, we, I need to fix the typo. We actually need it. And, and, and you can also, or anybody can do a select catalog to see the, the name they are. And that's actually one of the few ways somebody can see that they're actually running catalogs. So I needed to provide a way to make things look exactly like, like the same as without catalogs. And, but at the same time, we need to be able to see what's happening in a catalog. So I extended the show status with a new one, show server status only for the super user. He will see the total status of everything in the server. And um, if you want to see, uh, see something in the, just in the current catalog, you have show global and show catalog because the user may want to do show global, but he shouldn't see what everything happens. So if a normal user do show global, he will just see what's in the catalog, the same thing as show catalog status. And if you're not running catalogs, all these are, are, are the same thing. So what's implemented, we have this C connector is ex extended. Uh, we have uh, for cl new clients, you can do, uh, you do this to, be, uh, to basically specify the catalog. If you don't want to use uh, the other ways to connect, we will add that to all the catalogs. We have already a couple of clients doing that. We have the bin log, we are uh, putting within a comment, use catalog, so when you import, Everything goes into the right catalog. We have per catalog status variables. We have server variables. And, and all the setup is just providing those tables that needs to be in the catalog. Excuse me, Monte. Can you explain what is the THD catalog service for plugins? Uh, if you are a plugin, you need to be able to ask which catalog am, am I in? You need an API for that. Only this one? Yeah. Yes. But it doesn't need the current catalog, right? Yes. Because the plugin will be available in all the catalogs. Yeah, but it will only be uh, allowed to look at the catalog or th that the user is uh, calling from. And um, I, I try to keep the MariaDB knowledge base up to date with all catalog features that should be done. So hot copy, did you, uh, this is just uh, things that uh, is uh, fixed. Actually, actually, we also have MyRox fixed, but I haven't pulled that in. That was Andrews did that. That will be pulled in soon. And the room guy wrote yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. But basically, we are. We are and notable not implemented features. As we can run the test cases, that means that most of the features, not all, kind of work. The, base, the, the two big ones is Galera, and I'm talking just today with the Galera team that, to get that fixed. There are also some things that, that I wrote for 11.5, especially for catalogs. So if you have a backport catalogs to 10.11, we need to pull in this one so that we can get um, quotas for temporary tables into the catalogs. And Galera, and we need to do the, uh, fix the backup because the backup doesn't understand that the table structure is different. And after we have done this, we will, uh, we will try to add, add more uh, control of CPU like uh, G groups uh, and add uh, so groups, 
and also try to see how we can constrain memory disk, disk space per catalog. But that will come later. We need, just need to get the basics to work. So, Monty, what about the Excel start and Excel recover, user Excel? Those are... Uh, they already have a problem with their growth, so maybe they shouldn't be allowed for general use. Uh, remember, replication is global. Not replication, uh, user Excel, Excel start, Excel recover. But if they are per table, that should work, like exactly like before. Namespace for, for the names of, of, of the user Excel. Is that per catalog or is it global? Because if it's global, then maybe... It should be per catalog, but I, I, that actually is something I haven't thought no, about. Sure. I, I, I need to do a JIRA item for, for, for that. I will do that today with you. And uh, so we plan... Currently, we are trying to get it 11.7 or 11.8, probably 11.8. And uh, for the sponsors, Jonas is the, it's one of those. We have a couple, of, a few other ones that uh, we will backport that to 10.11 or 11.4. That's up to Jonas to, to, to tell me. But that, that, that's, these are basically our latest table releases. And we will then maintain that for the lifetime of that release. And um, we may, we are still discussing, should we have some extra functionality for SaaS vendors, because this is useful for both normal users who want uh, MariaDB users who want to considerate uh, their MariaDB users so they can have lots of similar applications within the same uh, server instead of having, for example, having a uh, running the same application for India or or China or Korea. They could have all that that in one one server and monitor that, especially if it's not a very high CPU application. So we, we are looking at what we should do that. We haven't decided on that yet. But uh, to the exciting part is when Andrew will show that, what does this really work? Okay, so for those who don't be, don't know me, uh, I'm Ficenti with hair apparently. So um, I am Andrew Hutchings. I'm the uh, Chief Contributions Officer for the MariaDB Foundation, um, and I helped out a little bit with catalogs, so this is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to show you a quick script I created just to um, install MariaDB and set up some catalogs. So we here have here loading my defaults file, and it's literally just a defaults file that points to where the data directory is. And then you can see, it's because I've zoomed in, but uh, dash dash catalogs equals cat one and cat two. So what is it going to do? Can you make it even bigger? Uh, can you see it back? Can you see it at the back? Yeah. Yep, they can see it at the back. Cool. I can make it bigger if need be. But um, So yeah, uh, we're going to create a catalog cat one and cat two. And when we do this, it's going to create the file system structure. It's going to create the def catalog and also create uh, cat one and cat two. So if I do build cat, It'll take a few seconds to actually do the install DB because it's creating the tables for all of the catalogs. And what do you have in Maria Cat? Assume you don't have. Uh, I don't have anything. That's interesting. <laughs> Live demo time. Yep. Uh, you have an error file up here. Yeah. It did actually create it all and everything, so it's fine. Uh, so you can see here the directory structure. Um, instead of the tables, you, uh, database directories you'd normally see, we've got cat1, cat2, and def here instead. So we've basically moved up, kind of up one directory level. So if I had go slash def, oops, wrong slash, uh, there, we can see here we've got the uh, MySQL uh, database with all the kind of privileged tables and everything like that. Sys, test, etc., and we should see the same if I do look in cat1, we should see the same again. So each catalog has their own set of these tables. <laughs> and you can show the MySQL, uh, uh, what's in the MySQL uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, schema, because that, that's different. Yeah, so that's for cat1 and... Just, to, they, just take the FRM files to get this uh, shorter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, OK. So yeah, there's there's a anyway. There are more in the uh, Def catalog than there are uh, in the others. So uh, now we need to actually run the server. So if I do start MariaDB, so uh, that's just running 
the readb server in the background and if we do uh, dash client you can see here the normal readb client i don't know if the guys at the back can see the bottom here if i hit enter a few times you should be able to see you now see the catalog name here followed by the uh, database name we're not in a database right now so if i do use test you'll be able to see that we've changed and we're in def.test um, so the, this is a good way to, in the client side to actually see kind of what's going on here. Um, so if I do show catalogs here, we get a list of the catalogs, the def being the default catalog, and then cat1 and cat2, which we created before. Um, I can do use catalog1, one, uh, cat1, one, sorry. Uh, use catalog cat1. And we switch to catalog cat1 here. I can do use test here and we can switch like that. So we can connect to catalogs in a couple of different ways. So the first one is to do client dash dash catalog equals cat1. And we see we've connected to cat1 here. We can also do uh, say Normally, uh, if you're running the MariaDB client, you can type in the database, uh, database name like that and connect to the database. But if we did cat1.test, we've connected to catalog1.test. This is what Monty was saying earlier. If you don't have catalog's capability in your client, then this will work. And we'll also have the ability to connect to different ports and IP addresses to connect to catalogs. So now we're in test. If we do create table T1, I'm just going to do very basic table, no data in it, and quit out of that one. Oh, oh apparently you already done that. This explains why I had an error earlier. I didn't clear out what was there before. Uh, so if we do uh, uh, test here and show tables. We actually have T1 and T2 here because it's kind of, here's one I created earlier. Um, but what we'll find uh, is that if I insert into T1... Uh, okay, that's what you, you, what you got the error because you actually got the error and the error... I got so the say, error. Say I'm... that these catalogs already exist. Yeah, because I forgot to uh, create, clear my uh, database beforehand. Um, T1. Ah. So if I do select star from T1 here, we can see that I've got a table just with one value in it. If I go back to cat1, use test, select star from T1, we can see here that it's empty here. So it's, it is a different table, even though I'm connecting to exactly the same uh, database and table name, it is completely isolated and that. No, you can actually to use uh, def and then you can show uh, table status. Yep. Uh, say, for example, how many inserts or create tables you did. Yeah, so I could do... Uh, show se server status. Show server status, yeah. Uh, probably a like on here. Com, yeah. Uh, so we should have com select. We've got twenty one here. Um, so, the, so this is the, the, the selects from from all users everywhere. Whereas if I had gone back to cat one and did uh, show global status like com, you should see if I can find it, selects. It was twelve. It was 12 okay, <laughs> I'll tell you where it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, com select. Yeah. Uh, it's up here, so there's 12 of them here. So each catalog is showing its own uh, status like And that's that. why we need to have global status because that's what we are used to do. Yeah. And that's why we need, uh, added server status. So yeah, this in a nutshell was pretty much all I was going to show, but... Uh, I to try to do sh uh, show s server status here, it shouldn't... Oh, it shouldn't work, yeah. Server status. Oh, it does work, but it's... Uh, if we do com select, okay, that, should, that shouldn't work. So then it... that shouldn't work, no. But I sh I won't be able to do say use uh, catalog cat two. I won't be able to do that because I don't have the privilege to do it. Yeah, and I won't be able to do create catalyst where I find this does work. 
Cat 3, yeah. So, yeah, I can't create new catalogs here or anything like that. Yeah, that's so. pretty good that we tested that, so I know, I know that means that I will fix that. Yeah, there's going to be these little edge cases we, we find as we're uh, testing these things. This is a kind of early alpha-ish stage right now of uh, where we're at. Um, and that's everything I had. Then full comment. The MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.